Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the world. Hey, amen, amen. Good morning, everybody. I hope this radio show sh- uh, finds you healthy and happy. Welcome to New Birth Ministries Micro Manor Radio Show. This is Reverend Essie Scott. This is our Sunday, January 21st, 2018 edition. I have a question for you today. Have you ever gotten so frustrated and wondered about your very existence to the point where you just wanted to wither away unnoticed, unbothered, and quiet? I think at some point all of us have experienced that, amen? We've experienced frustration in life. With life comes frustration. But I have good news for you today. It is not your time. Amen? It is not your time. We'll discuss this right after this. All right now, amen, all right, all right, all right, you've got something within you, all right, this is what the Lord wants you to know today, you have something within you, amen, I know some of us have been feeling bad, we all go through something, nobody's perfect, amen, uh, you got that something within you, did you ever want to give up but you just can't, amen? You have like a burning desire deep down within you. That's hope. That is the Lord within you. That is the Father living inside of you through the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have something way deep down in you, unexplainable strength. Reach for it. Don't let it go. It is your blessing, that unexplainable strength, that unexplainable feeling that you have. God, Yahweh, Yehovah, amen, amen, Abba, or Daddy, you have something within you. Amen, reach for it and use it. God is good, amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. I thank you for everybody that's listening here. We thank you for being Abba. We thank you for being our Father. All by yourself, you don't need any help. We thank you for raising us up yet another day, taking care of our loved ones, our families, our homes, our jobs, our vehicles. I ask that you put protection around, a hedge of protection around each and every person that is listening to this right now, Father God. There's so much going on in the world, but we are not to focus on the negative. You want us to be joyful. Amen. You want us to be happy. It is the enemy's job to try to take away that joy. But, Father God, that something, hallelujah, within us is stopping us from giving in to the enemy. And, Father God, if there's anybody out there right now that is experiencing this today, they're just not feeling well. They're just not – they're feeling depressed or they're down. And, and, and they keep – the enemy keeps telling them that they're not good enough. They, they, they can't do this. They, they really don't fit in. Father God, for those people, I ask that you strengthen, stir up the spirit within them in Jesus' holy name and show them that, yes, they are strong in Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, your son. Amen. In Jesus' name, Father, use me. Use me for this word today. There's so many people that just want to hear a good word from you. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Let us all say hallelujah and amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to get this from Philippians. If you want to turn your swords to Philippians, and I'll be reading um, from Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 to verse 30. And I'll read this very quickly. And it says, But I would ye should understand, brethren, this is uh, the, the Apostle Paul talking here, I would that you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident in my bonds are much more bold, mouthy, bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill, 
the one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set up for defense of the gospel. What then, uh, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, I will rejoice. For I know that this small, that this shall turn uh, to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, there it is, my hope, something within you, that is nothing I shall, thank you, Lord, I shall be ashamed but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. If you live, you win, and if you die, you win, but God doesn't want you to take your own life. Amen. Uh, we are to live for Christ. Verse 21, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. That's a good thing. Yet what shall I choose? I don't know. He says, I want not. I don't know. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart. See, the Apostle Paul went through the same thing that you are going through. He had a desire to depart. He wanted to leave here, <laughs> okay, and to be with Christ because he knew where he was going once he was dead, okay, which is far better. But 24, verse 24 says, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you for all your furtherance and joy, see, joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one uno spirit, <laughs> with one uno mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, to part, but also to suffer for his sake. There's a reason why you're going through what you're going through. Okay, and last verse 30, having the same conflict which she saw in me and now here to be in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, bless the reading of your holy word. We love your word, Lord God. Amen. If there's anybody out there that has never read your word, we pray for them right now that they get a Bible and start reading about you in Jesus' name. Amen. In verse 12 and 13. Okay, he says, I would that you understand that the things, in other words, what Paul is saying here is he wants you, he wants them to know um, of his progress for the good news. He, he wants people to know the things that he went through to be able to preach the good news. All right, if you are not, if you're saying you're a Christian, you love the Lord and everything's everything and everything's just so wonderful and beautiful, that's not, something's wrong. Because you are going to go through something to be a believer. The enemy is going to send something to you to try to knock you off your path. Amen? Amen. He suffered for Christ. And he said he, was, look, he wasn't trying to fit in. Okay? This is a problem with a lot of people. There's too many people out there that get depressed because they're so busy trying to fit in somewhere. And that might not be where God wants you to fit in. You're supposed to stand out. God doesn't want you to fit in. He wants you to stand out, darling. Aim it. Stop trying to fit in. You're awesome. So, uh, you know, I was listening to uh, Dave Chappelle the other day, and uh, well, yesterday, and he was saying just a little clip, and he was saying something about um, he knew that when he every time he goes out on stage, he knows he's going to be good. <laughs> he knows the comedian. I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but he knows he's going to be good. And this is how you should feel. Look, if a person like that who does like, like stand-up comedy for the world, shouldn't you feel the same way? You know, when you go, when you get around people, when you go to a meeting, when you go to church, whenever you sing, when you play the drums, whatever you're doing, when you cook for somebody or you take care of somebody, know that you know that you know that you're going to be good. Amen? Amen. <laughs> no, you're going to be good. God is good. Amen. Stand out. Verse 14. Um, 
he wants his other brothers to see his confidence. It, see, seeing someone's confidence in Christ like that boosts your own, and it causes you to speak the word of God with no fear. He's telling people, I'm doing this. Let me see verse uh, 14. Okay. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident. See, waxing means a little bit of time, just growing and growing and growing, waxing confident uh, by my bonds. They see what he's going through now, and it's causing them to be more confident, okay, and much more bold to speak the word without fear. Amen. Hallelujah. Preach it anyway. Preach it anyhow. Preach it anyway. Amen. No matter what's going on in your life, let's not get into a pity party and preach it anyhow. Amen. Um, it's asking, does your confidence in God catch on? Is it catchy? When people see how confident you are in God, people should want that. They should want to be that way too, okay? They want to copy the way you dance. They want to copy the way you sing. They want to copy the way you draw if you're an artist. They want to copy the way you cook. They want to copy. Let them them copy you, okay, speaking the word. Let them copy you praising and worshiping God. Amen. Give them something good to copy, right? What's your latest craze? What is the latest craze? It should be being confident in Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't be ashamed. He said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Amen. Verse 15, some people use God now. Okay, we don't want to say this, but some people do. A lot of people use God to separate with envy and strife. Some use him of goodwill. Some are very, very negative. Amen. And... I don't know if you've seen, but Bohu, uh, shame to say it, they always quote Old Testament to make their point. Did you ever see someone do that? You could tell what is on their mind that day because what they quoted or what they posted or whatever they're doing is uh, something of the Old Testament B.C., before Jesus, before Christ, amen. And sometimes it's so negative. You know, they always say if, if you read something you think it's about you, then most likely it's about you. That's not always true. Sometimes you can read something that somebody posted, and it's so negative, you don't know how to take that. Amen? We're we're supposed to be preaching the good news. Amen? Hallelujah. If that's the case, then we if if that's the case, you know, always preaching the Old Testament and using it for our own use, then let's stone bad children and shy from pork, too. Let's stop eating pork. Amen? I'm not saying that the Old Testament is irrelevant. Okay? The devil is a liar. It's very irrelevant. But we need to teach the teachings of Jesus now and not Moses. People are dying. People are crying. People need, to, they need salvation. They need to hear about the love of Jesus Christ in their lives, not the Mosaic law. Moses has nothing to do with this. Amen? Verse 16, there's contention and dispute, disagreement, discord, conflict, disharmony. That is not of God. For an example, people say Jesus was born in winter, okay? Well, first of all, we have to be very, very careful when we take the word and argue like that because shepherds didn't watch their flock by night in the winter. Have lambs in the spring. If you look down into Hebrew history, you'll see the sheep have lambs in the spring, and they were used for the sacrifices for the Passover. What other lamb was watched by shepherds and was used for Passover? You know, I mean, we have to use God's wisdom in some things. Amen? Just use God's wisdom. You know, let's not get into that when and where and how. And, you know, just just know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen? That means studying the word, studying Hebrew history, because you know your God is Jewish. All right? You know? Um, verse 17, talk, just talking about love. Verse 17 is just covering love, but the other of love knowing that I am set for the defense of God. Be, d- defend the gospel. Now, I'm not talking about going around shooting people and throwing knives at them and all that and karate chopping them. And just defend the gospel. Get to know the word so good. Study the word and get to know the word so good that you are begin, without even knowing it, you begin to defend the gospel. Defend Jesus. He defended you. Amen. Verse 18, preach Christ. Be sincere. It's required to be a preacher. All of us are meant to be a preacher. 
go out and tell 20, uh, uh, Matthew 28, 19, and 20, go out and tell the world. A math teacher doesn't teach the kids football. Amen? <laughs> so when you're saved, okay, you're a teacher and a preacher. Go out and preach, not soccer, not football, okay, not tennis. Preach the word. Amen? Verse 19, he's just speaking of um, his salvation, calls salvation, and asks for prayers. And this is the same for us. We need to ask one another for prayer. You stand in unity, united prayer. And when you do that, the spirit is promised. No man is an island. No man stands alone. Hallelujah. Uh, don't let the enemy suck you into um, uh, this being by yourself. Amen. It's an illusion. Do not think that you can get things done on your own. We are meant to pray for one another, with one another, check on one another. Amen. Uh, don't be ashamed of God in life or death. Both of them testify about the Lord. Boldness, to have the boldness to speak and live Christ-like, he's telling us in verse 20, okay? He says, according to my earnest expectation and my hopes, and in nothing I shall be ashamed, amen? But that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified. When you are bold for the word of God, for Jesus Christ, you are magnifying him. What you focus on grows. What you focus on amplifies. What you focus on magnifies. Magnify, edify, uplift Jesus Christ. He said that if you, if you draw, if, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men unto me. Amen? You want attention? Speak Jesus. You watch, you'll get attention. Don't let the devil fool you. You'll get attention. Just make sure you're ready to handle it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's why you've got to study the word. Amen. Christ needs to be magnified. Be careful on how you treat your body. Does your body glorify God? Amen. We have, because we'll be drawing people to us. When you start preaching the word and teaching the word, are you glorifying God? A smoke, smoking anything that is pornography. What about the women with the low cut, the low cut blouses? Are you attracting people to your body, or are you attracting people to Jesus? What about the ones with the high cut skirts, low cut blouses, high cut skirts, where you can barely cross your legs when you sit down? We need to check this tight pants. The men with the tight pants, and you know we just have to check ourselves. Verse twenty one: To live in Christ, um, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. There's no more suffering after you pass. But make sure your passing is uh, natural. Amen? Do not do it yourself. Because there's so many things that God knows that we don't know yet. And we don't really know what happens to a person that commits suicide. All we know is God is love. And I'm sure he's not sitting on a throne. He's going to be hurling lightning bolts at them. So let's just leave that to him and live our lives as strongly and carefully as we can. Okay? It is not your time, okay, so don't do that. It is not your time. When it's your time, you will know. Amen? That's giving strength to someone out there that may need to hear that. Verse 22 and 23, to live will bring on a show of his fruit. Listen, you, it's a win-win situation. When you live, you, sh you show God's fruit. God will sh people will see your fruit for God. No matter what you do, you can stumble, just get back up. You try to open up something, open up a business or whatever, open up a ministry or whatever. You might stumble, might make a mistake, but get back up. God will bless it for you. Have stick-to-itiveness. Amen? If you live, you show a great harvest. Just work at it and work at it. If you guys knew what I went through with this ministry, I was fighting between doing it myself and doing it God's way, and he won. <laughs> It took me years to get to where I'm at now, and I'm not really, I haven't really arrived. There's so many others that are so much better and greater than I am and have wonderful ministries, amen? So, you know, just do it God's way. It, it saves time, amen. Hallelujah. Um, you'll have a great harvest, but to die, you'd be with Jesus, so Paul is saying here how it was hard to choose between the two. See, he also, how, look, listen, the Apostle Paul also went through that. You're not alone. Apostle Paul wrote much of the New Testament. This man's been through a lot. I've heard negative about him. I've heard positive about him. I would rather believe the positive. Amen. This man used to kill Christians. 
Okay, so you, you think that you're going to hell because you had an abortion and you, you think you're going to hell because you, you smoke dope or you, you, you shoot up or something or, or you just feel like you're, not, you're too dirty for God. That, that The devil's a liar. Don't believe that. I'm telling you, the apostle Paul used to kill Christians and ended up writing most of the New Testament. How's that? Ended up glorifying Jesus. Come on, y'all. Amen. Who said you're not good enough? Amen. The devil is a liar. Verse 24, to live is better. If we live, we're good, and if we die, we're good. We're to get, we, we get to preach to others if we live, though. That is what's awesome. You take so many more. Hey, look, I want to take as many to heaven with me as I can. Amen. All right. We are under grace. Enjoy your salvation. There's no condemnation in Christ. Look up the word condemnation. So if something is trying to condemn you and somebody's trying to make you feel like you're too wrong to do anything, put him in check. Who, who lives inside of you? The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Put that devil in check and tell him you are good enough. God said you were good enough. Amen? Stay away from them cliques, too. That's another problem, too. A lot of Christians run into cliques, and, and they're innocent. They run into these cliques so innocently, and they don't know what's going on, and they're new to it, and, and they're trying to catch on, and they're trying to, like I said, fit in when they were made to stand out. Some of these people that have high titles, bishop, president, okay, pastor, this one, that one, doctor, some of those need to sit down and listen to the babes. Oh, my God, the Jesus sends to them. <laughs> they know so much they won't listen to a babe. And the babes stand. Then the Bible says in the end times, babies will testify. Babies will start to preach the word. Amen. Amen. So honor one another. Okay, never look down your, your, your nose or your, or your shoulder at somebody. The song tells the world. And there's a song used to be out years ago. It says, walk like an Egyptian. I don't know if you remember that song or not. I'm telling everybody, walk like a good Christian. Amen. Walk like a Christian. Hallelujah. And be proud of it. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord thy God is with you. Look it up. It's in, the, it's in the Bible. Amen. He tells you so many times, verse 25 and 26, knowing so, we help to continue the joy of others. We laugh. They laugh. Look, when you. Did you ever try to experiment, the smiling experiment? Did you ever walk down the road one day and you're looking kind of gloom and doom and nobody says hi to you? You go in a mall or something and everybody looks like they look real weird, like at you or something, and they don't know whether they should, they should say, they don't know whether or not they should say good morning, hello, how are you, nothing, because you just look mean. Try smiling. Watch what happens. When you smile and you say, good morning, how are you, they'll smile back. Unless they're having an extremely bad day and they could care less about your happiness. <laughs> Then you pray for him. Amen? You smile, they smile. Verse 27, this verse debunks the abuse of grace. Okay? Let me read verse 27 again. Only let your, uh oh, here we go. The grace people ain't going to like this. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else I be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit and with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. Only that there is a condition, I hate to say this, but there it is. Steadfastness is enjoined. Let your conduct be that of the gospel. Be consistent steadfast. He says, only let your conversation be that, be becoming of the gospel. Okay, watch your conversation, what you say, how you speak, amen, to you. That debunks the abuse of the grace gospel. Let your conversation be becoming of a Christian. You cannot sin on purpose because you were saved. And there's too many people that are thinking they're abusing the grace gospel, and they're saying, well, I can sin because Jesus died. Didn't Jesus die for it? No, that's not. He didn't. Jesus didn't go through all that stuff he went through on the cross just so that you can just go out there and sin on purpose. Okay? Stand fast in one spirit, capital S, in one spirit, a Holy Spirit, not various Spirits. He's not telling us to stand fast in various spirits, but one spirit, the big S, not the little S. The little S consists, of course, of alcohol, drugs, lust, <laughs> greed, <laughs> jealousy. Amen. Verse 28, fear not, don't fear your enemies. It lets them know that they're going to hell. Don't fear your enemies. You're supposed to pray. This is why Jesus said pray for your enemies. Amen. It just may help them when you face 
the toothless tiger that chases you, he will decide not to try to bite you. Somebody was going around chasing the tiger, chasing the tiger. I mean, the tiger was chasing him, chasing him, and they were afraid, they were afraid of the tiger. And come to find out, he finally turned around and faced that tiger. The tiger didn't have any teeth. Amen. And this is what some people are doing. Amen. 29 and 30, as you believe in Christ, you will suffer. I, I hate to tell some of you this, but it's, a very, it's the truth. It's just to be filled up, prayed up, and be prepared. You will suffer. Those that don't already belong to the devil. They already belong to him. He has them. And here's the bombshell I'll end you with. I'll end with, number one, suffering is a gift of God. Look at it that way. Suffering is a gift of God. Amen. Long suffering. Look it up, Galatians 5.22. And lastly, I'll say I know people who pray not to suffer, and that is a mistake. Do not be one of those people who pray not to suffer. Are you saved? Do you have Jesus Christ? If you don't, just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I accept you as my Savior. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. And if you just said that, Romans 10, 9, amen. Welcome to the body of Christ. Thank you for listening. Read that word, and if you have any questions, you can write me at rebessie at me.com. God bless you, and thank you for listening. Amen.